free software is software that respects your freedom and your community. So when we say free, we're not talking about price. We're talking about freedom. So you should think hurra, not gratis. <clears throat> With software, there are just two possibilities. Either the users control the program or the program controls the users. The first case is free software. The other case is user subjugating proprietary software. That's what comes typically from Microsoft and Apple and Adobe and Oracle and so many others. <clears throat> now, in order for the users to control the program, they need certain freedoms. If the users have enough freedom, then they can effectively have control over the program. What freedoms are these? There are four essential freedoms which define free software. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish. Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code and change it so the program does your computing as you wish. Freedom two is the freedom to redistribute exact copies to others when you wish. We also call that the freedom to help other people. And freedom three is the freedom to contribute to your community, the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions when you wish. Now, each of these freedoms is literally the freedom to do that thing if and when you wish. It's not a requirement. You're not required to run the program as you wish. You're not required to run it at all, but you should be free to run it as you wish. You're not required to study the source code. You can just run the program as you got it without looking, but you should be free to study it. And if you've studied it, you could be satisfied. You're not required to change it, but you should be free to do so and use the results if you decide it's necessary. You're never required to make a copy and give it to someone else. The point is, sometimes you'll want to, sometimes you'll feel you should, and you've got to be free to do it when you decide to. And if you make a modified version, you're not required to distribute that. You can just use it by yourself. But if you decide to distribute it, then you must be free to, to do so. So if the users have these four freedoms, then the program is free software because the social system of using it and distributing it is an ethical system, one that respects users' freedom and community. But without adequate four freedoms, the program is user subjugating proprietary software. The program controls the users and the developer or owner controls the program, which means that this program in social and ethical terms is just a yoke. It's an instrument of unjust power for that developer over the users. That's why proprietary software is an injustice, and that's why we campaign to get rid of it. First, from our lives, and ultimately, we hope, from the entire world. We hope that you will be able to control your computing by using exclusively free software, and we hope you will join us bringing about that world. I started the free software movement in 1983. I wanted to make it possible to use a computer and have freedom. It was impossible because the computer won't do anything without an operating system installed in it. And in 1983, all the operating systems for modern computers were proprietary. If you bought a new PC, in order to make it run, you had to have a proprietary operating system in it. And there went your freedom. I decided to change this by writing another operating system called GNU. GNU is a Unix-like operating system. It's compatible with Unix. It has the same commands that Unix used to have, plus lots more. And the name GNU is a joke. It's a recursive acronym. It stands for GNU's Not Unix. GNU's Not Unix, G-N-U. Now, the word happens to be the name of an animal that lives farther south in Africa. But 
what makes it a joke is that it's recursive. Programmers love jokes with recursion in them. But it's also a way of recognizing the technical ideas that we derive from Unix. But we couldn't use any of the code of Unix because that was proprietary software. We had to replace everything. Now, we, in the GNU project, we wrote a lot of pieces. We also found other pieces. We convinced people to release pieces, like we convinced Berkeley to release parts of BSD as free software. And some programs got developed as free software independently. The last missing piece of GNU was contributed in 1992. We had almost everything but the kernel. One major essential component was still missing, and that's when Mr. Torvalds, who had a proprietary kernel called Linux, decided to make it free software. Now, he never liked us very much, so he didn't think of this as contributing to the GNU project. So the system we use is basically GNU plus Linux, and if you call it GNU plus Linux, you'll give us a share of the credit, which as the initiators of the whole thing, we ought to deserve. So today, you can get computers and run them in freedom using the GNU plus Linux system, but it's not guaranteed because there are hundreds of different distributions of the GNU plus Linux system, and most of them include some non-free software or suggest non-free software to the users. So they'll take you closer to freedom, but they won't take you all the way there. So if you want to be sure that you're installing only freedom respecting software, you've got to install one of the free distros listed in gnu.org slash distros. You can find more information in gnu.org and fsf Org. Now, there are many people who admire my work, but I have heroes too. And among my heroes are the people of Egypt who triumphed over dictatorship. So if I had a hat, I'd say hats off to you. And I hope that you will also work for freedom in the area of software. Having triumphed over such a difficult enemy. I'm sure you can triumph over this one, proprietary software.